Hey guys. In this tutorial, we will create the player and also create all the animations that we are going to need in this game. As we are going to create animation for the player, so we will first create a folder called anim, because we should keep the project files organized. So I am going to open the player folder located in sprites folder. Here I am going to look for running images of the player. We will now select all the run images of the player. I am going to select the run 1 image and hold the shift key and then select the run 15 image and then I am going to drag and drop them onto the hierarchy or you can put it inside the scene view. We can see we got a floating window, it's because we have put multiple images at a time, it means we want to create an animation with those images, so we have to give a name for this animation. I am going to open the anim folder and then name it player run. I am going to change the name to player, because this is our player. And then we will change the sorting layer to midground. We can see the player looks too big compared to the background and ground. So, we will make it a little bit smaller. So, we will go to the player folder and select all the images of the player. Then inside the inspector window we can see there is an option called pixels per unit, the value is 100 by default. But, we will change it to 200. We already learned about the pixels per unit option in the previous video. After changing the value, we can hit apply. Now, inside the animation folder, we can see there is two files, but we created just one file which was an animation clip. Be patient, let me show what's going on here. This player run file is an animation clip that we've just created. But, we didn't create this run one file, it has been created automatically when the player run animation clip was created. Because, this animation clip needs a controller in order to be used with a game object. Now, we will need a window called animation. So, I am going to select window and then animation and then select this animation, it will show the animation window to us, as you can see. I am going to drag this window and place it right here next to the game view window. Now, if we press this play button, we can see the player is running. But, I think the running speed is a little bit slow. So, we have to make it faster. To do that we will click this menu and select this show sample rate. It made the samples rate visible right here. The sample rate is currently 12. It means, 12 images are showing in one second. If we increase the sample rate, it will make animation faster. So, I am going to make it 20. Now, 20 images will be showing in each second. So, we are going to check if the animation became faster or not. Okay, we can see the animation is now faster than before and I think this is enough. Now, we will need another animation clip for the player. This will be for jumping animation, so I am going to select the run drop down here and select create new clip. I am going to name it player jump and make sure it is inside the anim folder. Now, we have to add images for this animation clip. Because this time we didn't already add any image for the animation. So, I am going to open the player folder.
and then select all the player jump images and then drag and drop them onto the animation window. The sample rate is 60, so the animation is too fast. We will make it a little slower. So, let's try with 15. It looks good for now. Now, we will add some components to the player. First, we will select the player game object and then inside the inspector we will click add component and then I am going to search for rigid body 2D. Now, I am going to click on it, so that it gets added automatically to the player game object. Rigid body makes a game object to fall down because of the gravity, just like any real life object. By the way we are going to need one more thing called polygon collider. This collider determines the object area. Because of this collider this player will now be able to collide with another object. If you cannot understand it now. Don't worry, wait a bit. Now, we will play the game for the first time to check if the player is falling down to the ground because of the gravity. Okay, it's working. But, it should fall down to the ground. But, it keeps falling down even through the ground. Because, the ground doesn't have any collider. So we will add collider to the three grounds. In this case, we will add box collider. Because, the box collider would be perfect for the ground. So, I am going to select the ground one game object and click on add component. Now, we can search for Box Collider 2D. Now, we can see a green box inside the scene view. This box is the collider area. Now, we have to edit this collider. So, I am going to click the Edit Collider option. Now, we can edit the collider shape the way we want from the scene view. When the editing is done, we can click again here to stop editing the collider. Now, remember this object is a prefab, so whenever we make a change to this object we have to apply it for the prefab that we have created earlier inside the prefabs folder. So, we will now click on overrides drop down and select apply all. Now, we have to add the box collider 2D component for the rest two ground prefabs. So, I am going to open the prefab folder and double click on the ground 2 prefab so that it opens the prefab's properties. Now, we can add the box collider 2D component. Then we will edit the collider shape. After that we will add the collider to the ground 3 prefab.
Okay, now, we can check the game. So, the player is now falls down to the ground. But, we don't want it to fall like this. We want the player to fall down on the ground and and stay stand up. So in this case, if we just freeze the player rotation from its Z axis, then it will not get rotated after falling down to the ground. In order to do that, I am going to select the player game object, and then inside the rigid body 2D component, we can see constraints, and then freeze rotation. We will just click this little box here. Then if we hit the play button, we can see the player falls down to the ground perfectly as expected. Now, make sure to save this by pressing Ctrl S. In the next video, we will make the player run endlessly. So, this is it for this video, and I will see you in the next video.